Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Dave from MyGunValues.com and today I'm just going to do a short little video. This is a follow-up to the 1873 video. Um, I'm actually shooting these the same day even though they probably won't post the same day. The 1873, like we discussed in the last video, was the first centerfire reloadable cartridge. Um, it was basically pistol in power. Again, I've still got sitting here the, the 3840 cartridge. Uh, the 4440 just had a little less of a shoulder on it. You can see that that shoulder and neck right there. The 4440 was just smaller. This is a 40 caliber bullet. Um, you know, the 4440 was a was actually a 43 caliber bullet technically. So, Winchester, as I mentioned in the last video, Oliver Winchester was a ruthless competitor. He wanted to run everybody else out of business. He wanted to own the repeating rifle market. He had a problem. In, 18, in the 1870s, these cartridges that I just showed you were, were you know, they were good for, for maybe stopping a man, maybe hunting deer they weren't good for anything large. In the 1870s, of course, the big thing was bison hunting. You know, the buffalo herds were being exterminated for their leather more than anything else. Um, there, was, there was some in there that if you, if you deprive the Indians of the buffalo, then you deprive them of their food source. That did play into it, too. But the buffalo, you know, buffalo hunting was the, was the area of the great big sharps uh, Stevens, Ballards, the great big single shots, the great big long cartridges shooting heavy bullets, single shots. Winchester wanted a piece of that market. Had a problem. The toggle link action could only be enlarged so much, you know, makes take so long of a cartridge. So in the 1876, they actually did make the receiver longer. It's approximately an inch, inch and a quarter longer. And they made great big fat cartridges. They originally started with the 4575. They came out with, I believe, it's the 4060, the 4560, and the 5095, where the four cartridges produced to fit the 1876 rifle. They were short and fat. I have some pictures here. That's a that's our 4575 cartridges, and then that is a picture of a single 5095 cartridge. They were short and fat. Um, the they never really took off. By the time this rifle came out and became available to the general public, it was really 1877. The last of the bison herds were being wiped out. The big bison herds were being wiped out. So there was really, other than your odd bear out there, or moose or elk, there was really nothing for these guys to hunt. It was not really a strong enough rifle to handle the pressure that it was put under. Consequently, it was never really very popular. Um, there was only 63,000 made. Um, 4575 is the most common chambering I've seen. Um, you don't see these every day. They do tend to be very, very expensive guns, especially in shootable condition. They have been reproduced by Uberti, um, the Italian companies. And they were made in the same configurations that the 1873 was made in. You had the rifle, the carbine, and the musket. You had something else on these. You had the deluxe version. Uh, checkered pistol grip, fancy wood. So there was, there was an upgrade to these too. Again, there were also three types, mostly having to do with how the side plates mounted. In the case of these, it was one to five thousands. The early ones tend to be very, very expensive when you find them. And then I believe it's five to thirty thousand was type two, and then thirty thousand to the end of the production run was type three. 
1876, you know, th some things have never changed much. And of course, the military rounds of the time were the rounds that everybody wanted today, and they're what they want they wanted back then. Well, the military round during this time frame was the 4570. 4570 was too long to work through this action. So, four years after this thing came out. Winchester ran into a problem by the name of Marlin and he produced a lever action rifle that would handle the 4570. And Marlin really started to make some inroads into Winchester's business with the bigger, more powerful cartridges. And again, Oliver Winchester was a, was a ruthless competitor, but he died in 1881. So you had that transitional period where the um, where the new management was coming in. His, his son took over for a short time, but I believe his son died four months after he did, um, you know, of tuberculosis. The, you know, there was a lot of things going on there. So Winchester really didn't come out with another gun until 1886, and that's where we see John Moses Browning coming in. And that will be, the next video is on the 1886, and we'll discuss Browning and his influence and how he pretty much, in my mind, saved the Winchester Company and, and allowed it to go on and become the, you know, the, the giant company it became up, into, up until the Great Depression. So, just a basic short video, the 1876. Uh, funny thing about it, the carbines tend to have a stock that's, that's too long for a carbine but don't mistake it for the musket, which has more barrel bands than the carbine version. Um, again, it was heavier. It wasn't real popular. With only 63,000 originally made, you don't see a lot of them out there. And high-grade examples are really, really rare. Even even at like high uh, high stakes or high-grade auctions like uh, Rock Island sometimes uh, has. You don't see a lot of 1876 Winchesters. There just weren't that many of them made. Um, they also had... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? They also had you know the same thing with special orders. They would produce a lot of special orders. You know, so... If you, if you have any doubts whether or not that gun's been cut down or the barrel's been changed or the caliber's been changed, the Cody letter is really the only way to go. There's no guarantees you're going to see. You know, you're going to get the information you want, but it's the only shot you've got of getting it. Sometimes it'll just simply say, received in the warehouse this day, shipped this day. Won't say who it's to, won't say original configuration, won't say caliber. Sometimes it'll give all that information. So you gotta, you kind of got to look and, and hope for that. So, at any rate, just a Real short video on the 1876. The 1886 video, um, there will be an 1886 here. There was a lot more cartridges for the 1886, and we'll discuss that in, in great length on the next video. So for now, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something, and have a good day.